distance depends on the arrow, but it's usually somewhere between 3 and 10. The fletching has a smooth front surface and a rough back surface, producing a difference in air resistance that results in rotation. Air pressure decreases over the smooth front surface and increases over the rough back surface, causing the arrow to rotate as the fletching is pulled towards the low pressure side. The arrow's design reflects the wisdom of generations past, who discovered ways of increasing accuracy even before the arrival of modern scientific theory. In addition to arrow design, technique is of course key to hitting the target. In Kudo, archers are required to follow the prescribed eight-step firing technique, known in Japanese as the Shaho Hasetsu. The Shaho Hasetsu are the eight stages of firing an arrow. If you go through these eight steps in order, then you'll not only demonstrate correct technique, but also ensure good mental preparation. The Shaho Hasetsu are a series of actions designed to improve focus and concentration. If performed perfectly, then the arrow should naturally find its way to the target. The first step is to properly plant both feet in the correct position. You should be directly in front of the target with your feet angled at around 60 degrees. The distance between your feet needs to be half of your height. Next, the archer stands upright and stabilizes their torso. They then confirm the target, breathe deeply, and prepare mentally for the shot. Now the archer lifts both arms before gradually drawing the bow. At full draw, there is a brief pause and a moment of intense concentration before the arrow is finally released. Even after releasing the arrow, the archer must remain alert and maintain correct posture. The most challenging part of Shaho Hasetsu is said to be the moment of release, which in Japanese is known as Hanare. At the moment of release, the left wrist turns slightly outwards. The area at the base of the thumb is called the tsunomi, and this part must act as a pivot to prevent the bowstring from hitting the archer's hand. The most crucial skill in Kyudo is to make sure you properly use the tsunomi, as this has a major effect on whether you will hit the target. The movement of the tsunomi as you fire the arrow also allows the bow to be drawn closer to the body. This helps to keep the arrow stable, resulting in a powerful, well-controlled shot. If you fire the arrow skillfully, it will fly comparatively straight, but even then there will be a slight wobble. With poor technique, however, the arrow won't stabilize in time and will wobble throughout its flight, preventing it from flying true. If you release the arrow properly, it will wobble at first, but after 10 meters or so, this will subside as the arrow then flies smoothly towards the target. The time it takes for this wobbling to subside has a major impact on how often arrows hit the target. The movement of the right hand is also key in determining the wobble. 
you use the thumb of the right hand to hook the bowstring, which must be drawn and released smoothly. Even the slightest wavering or extra movement as you release the right hand leads to further wobbling of the arrow. So this is why the mental aspect of the release is so important. If the archer is focused too heavily on winning or hitting the target, this disturbance in their psychological state affects the smoothness of the release. It's for this reason that mental control is seen as central to the sport. Of course, there's a distinct moment of release. At that instant, you need to make sure you're not obsessed with the target, but that, in your mind, you can still feel the target calling out to your arrow. Senior instructors can pause at that point for five or ten seconds and be completely still. The rest of us start to get impatient and try to hit the target after just three or four seconds. It's easy to lose the battle of wills and let go too early. If you draw the bow and release the arrow correctly, then you always find the target. To make sure you don't miss the target, what you need is mental strength. In Japanese archery, we say that a true shot never misses, and it's when the body and mind become one that our arrow naturally flows from the bow. At the All Japan Kyudo Taikai, performing under pressure becomes a great test of nerve. Under the competition rules, it doesn't matter whether the arrow hits the edge of the target or the center. A strike is simply a strike. In the qualifying round, archers fire two arrows, but only those who hit the target both times progress to the next stage of the competition. One of the top categories at this year's tournament was won by Masaaki Tosa. The final was contested between six archers. All the other archers have missed the target, and it's only Tosa left to shoot. If he can find the target, he will have won the tournament. Tosa is unfazed by the pressure, not only striking the target, but shooting right through the bullseye. Did you know everyone else had missed? Yes, I did. But I don't worry about that at all. Even if my opponents miss, my job remains the same. The only question for me is how I handle my own bow. Releasing the arrow naturally is what is best, but it's truly a challenge. I will keep on reaching for that ideal until the day I die. As a result of quieting all stray thoughts and focusing intensely, Tosa unites his body and mind to allow for a natural release. At the end of Japan's Warring States period, the bow and arrow ceased to be a weapon of war. However, even though it was no longer used in battle, samurai continued to fire their bows and arrows every day. They used the art to train themselves to eliminate insincerity fear and doubt from their hearts. When you miss the target, you have to reflect on what went wrong. And that is why Japanese archery has evolved to become a form of spiritual training. Even in complete darkness, when all the elements come together, the arrow will find its target. For Kyudoka, 
putting the phrase, a true shot never misses into practice can truly become a lifetime's work. In Kudo, unlike many sports where the battle is against an opponent, the real challenge is self-mastery and not being swayed by thoughts or emotions. While outwardly it may appear simple, it's the internal or spiritual depth of Kudo that draws so many people to practice the art. We conclude today's show by introducing a sports nutritionist who is currently using their decades of experience to support athletes aiming to reach the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics. Every para-athlete faces their own unique set of challenges depending on their disability, and this in turn calls for an individually tailored diet. Mia Uchino teaches nutritional science at a university, while also working as a sports nutritionist for para-athletes. One athlete she's previously supported is former wheelchair track and field competitor Masaaki Chiba. Damage to Chiba's spinal cord meant he easily developed low blood sugar, and he'd sometimes find himself unable to move in the middle of a training session. Uchino worked with him to improve the nutritional content and timing of his food intake. We investigated what kind of food he needed to eat and how many hours before training to stop his blood sugar levels dropping and found the optimum was to have a substantial meal several hours earlier and then again eat something light and easily absorbed right before a competition. Two years after Uchino's intervention, Chiba won his first silver medal at the World Championships. Uchino realized just how important diet is for para-athletes, and for the Sydney Paralympics, she accompanied the Japanese team as their nutritionist. Chikako Suzuki is a swimmer, a previous national record holder. She's returned to the sport for the first time in 20 years, hoping to make the Japan team for the Tokyo Paralympics. Suzuki has issues with poor digestion, and Uchino advises her on how to absorb nutrients without stressing her digestive system. You should pay careful attention to what you eat and how it affects you, what makes you feel good, and what makes you feel worse. Recording everything so you can analyze it. All of this was completely new to me. And I'm so grateful things can actually improve now. Athletes with disabilities are getting ever more chances to shine in competition. And as nutrition has become a core part of the support they receive, I hope to keep working with more of them on this. Mia Uchino tailors her support to each individual athlete, helping them all to achieve their best possible performance.